Good morning and welcome Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, and welcome to Monday. I hope you all had a great weekend. Uh, I know here in the Valley of the Sun, it rained like crazy this weekend. It was fantastic. Uh, and then the Cardinals played, and well, there you go. That was the end of the fantastic. Our toll-free number, 800 to the website at allamericangold.com. And uh, it is Monday. I'm joined, uh, as always, with my partner, Jason Walker, in Colorado. And Monday means my son Joey's with us. He is your investment guru. He is the guy you call to make sure you continue to build wealth uh, no matter what may be happening in the world today. And, Joey, it's another wild day. We got gold up big, silver up big. Uh, the Dow is rallying. It seems like every day, uh, especially when it comes to the equity markets, it's up big. It's down big. It's up big. It's down big. Uh, very reminiscent of, of what we saw during the, the financial crisis where uh, the markets would just go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It, 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 it's, it's a stressful time for investors. It's indeed a very, very stressful time, and it's crazy. You know, one day it's up, the next day it's down bad, and it's, well, what are the signs right now? What's the market telling us? And the thing is, you know, people play this game with a lot of emotion, and, and when, when it goes up like today, you'll see a lot of people start buying in, and then the next day it could be a bloodbath. And it's all about, you know, having this philosophy around things and staying true, true to it. Uh, the more emotion that you put into the market and buy and sell, uh, based on how you're feeling that night, the, the more destructive it could be to your overall portfolio. And, and by selling out or purchasing at the wrong times, you could be locking in some losses that you wouldn't want. And it's all about, hey, what am I comfortable with in these times? What am I not comfortable with? Am I going to bed at night? And if you're not going to bed at night, there's probably a problem and you should talk to someone about it. And I would certainly love to have that conversation and just pick and gauge where you're at and really what your comfortability level is. Uh, that being said, listen, I'm not, a, I'm not a miracle worker. If I was a miracle worker, I'd be retired in the beach of Florida right now. But it's all about coming together, having these conversations around things, and deciding what are we comfortable with, where are we at, and what's our time horizon in the market. Well, I think the, the biggest thing that, that people are worried about, especially, uh, you know, I'm 52, so I'm getting close to that age. I don't have uh, all this time left. Uh, people that are, are in their 50s and 60s, probably more important than ever uh, because they, they've probably been, and not probably, let, let's face it, the Federal Reserve has been pumping money into this system for decades now, and people have just gotten accustomed uh, to writing these things out, and now all of a sudden people's time horizons have shortened up. Uh, probably not the right thing to do this time around. And, and certainly when, like you said, you're in your 50s, you're in your 60s, and if you're still super aggressive right now, uh, I, I, I would question that a little bit. And, and I think it's time to have that conversation. Most investment planners, investment managers, aren't going to tell you the reality of things. They're going to tell you to stay aggressive because at the end of the day, they just want to see if they can actually hit big and hit a home run and grow that money and get more assets under management. Whereas when I talk to people in their 50s, 60s, entering retirement, hey, are we set up with things outside the market? If not, then we need to do a better job of preserving our wealth, not growing it, so that when we enter retirement, you know, we're not losing 30%, 40% of our 401k money, which most people rely on uh, for retirement. And then we factor in things like Social Security. What are you getting from that? Then health care costs in retirement. And there's so much more to financial planning than just investments. And to be sitting here losing 30% of your money, I just think it, 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 it's not necessary and it shouldn't be happening. And a lot of people just, you know, their, their advisors are just blowing them off, saying, hey, just close your eyes, don't look at your 401k. And I think that's the wrong way to go about it. And there should be a conversation around things based on your comfort level and, like you mentioned, time horizon. We don't have this all this time to be in 100% equities right now if you're entering retirement, and you should be looking to rebalance your portfolio, at least have a conversation around things like that. 
And then, and again, this isn't just a, a lot of people out there think, well, you know what? Hey, I, I'm in my 401k at work. Uh, and, and, and let's just say you're, you're my age and you're in your 401k at work and, and they don't realize there's a lot of things that they could be doing, uh, to protect themselves, but they just don't know it. They're like, well, I don't have that many options. I can't do what I want to do in my 401k. And consequently, a lot of times they do nothing. Exactly. And that's the fear people have, you know, the unknown, right? And what we do specifically, if I could change my title, be financial educator, because first off, we're educating people on all of the choices they have through work. You know, a lot of you are probably funding these 401ks, but did you know that they offer a Roth option, which means paying the taxes now rather than in retirement? A lot of people don't know about small little caveats like that that will greatly boost your net worth in retirement. Uh, we all know the biggest expense we're going to incur in our lifetimes is going to be taxes. So how do we play a game around that? And there's certain ways to do it through your 401k at work. Just most people aren't taught it because your business or whatever you're working for don't necessarily bring it up, right? And then there's the other things outside of the 401k through work, like the IRA, an individual retirement account. How do we set that up to be tax efficient as well? And then you look into all these other things, like different buckets of money you could be growing your money into and, and, and being more tax efficient in that way. And there's just a lot of different little things we can be doing, but really depends on your situation, your time horizon, and what's going on in your financial background and what you want to achieve. Hey, we'll be back. We'll have a wrap it up here with Joey in the next segment. Don't touch that dial. Patriot Radio News Hour. 800-951-0592, Patriot Radio News Hour, Joe and Jason uh, here on a Monday. Uh, we've got uh, my son Joey with us today uh, from Northwestern Mutual. And, and Joey, the one thing I want to highlight, because it happened here, here all the time and why we're uh, so excited to have you here, because customers would call and, and say, hey, how do I do something uh, with my 401k? And we would always tell them, oh, well, are you still working? Yes, I'm still working. And our answer was always, well, there's really not a lot you can do uh, as far as gold and silver. Uh, but what you're saying is, hey, there is a lot you can do in that 401k, even if you're still working. Uh, but most people aren't aware of it, and that's why they need to reach out. Yeah, and by the way, a lot of things you can do with the 401k is not necessarily roll it over with me and my company, one, because you're getting a match. So we need to make sure we're being smart and we're taking advantage of that free, of that free money, right? But what we can certainly do for you is educate you and, and show you how your money's being invested through that 401k. If you just send me a statement over, we'll look it over and we'll tell you exactly how aggressive it is. And, and if we should probably tone it down or tone it up, depending on your time horizon of things, or maybe it's just what you're comfortable about. And then in that 401k, we have to decide between, well, are we funding the Roth version or are we funding the regular version? And if you're funding the regular version, pretty much our recommendation to you is going to be to switch that over to start funding the Roth so you can pay those taxes now at a lower income tax bracket. Because when you retire and you're withdrawing from your 401k, that's all being credited as income. So how do we play the tax game you know, preventing the government to, from taking all of our money. Um, so there's small little caveats of things that we can tweak that could save you thousands and thousands of dollars. It's just about being open to a conversation and doing a little bit of homework and bugging your HR a little bit to get a recent statement. And, and from there, we can have multiple conversations around that and then eventually get around to the other side of planning and other things we're doing to try and help you make you bulletproof for times like this when we're in a recession. How do we make sure that we have different buckets of money to where if a recession happens like it is today, that you are not worried and that you're not losing sleep at night? And, and really, we do a good job of guiding people and at the very least, just educating them on the things they can do. Joey, how do people get a hold of you? Yeah, it's my personal cell phone. Uh, my number is 602-909-9048. Again, that's 602 602- 909-9048. Just shoot me a call or text. You know, I'll get back to you as soon as I can if I don't answer. And uh, also, you can find my information on the KHNC website under the sponsors page. Shoot me an email, uh, whatever you're most comfortable with, and I'll give you a call. We'll chat for 10 minutes and set something up. 
And again, you do you do it all for them. If people want life insurance, uh, long term care insurance, you you do all of that as well. On, on top of uh, working with uh, what they've got in in the equity markets, whether that be four hundred one k's, IRAs, tax prep, uh, Northwestern Mutual. You guys are a one stop shop. You guys offer everything. Where a lot of people, unfortunately, they all have somebody. They only specialize in just a small piece. Uh, of, of your retirement, and that's probably the biggest mistake a lot of people make is, hey, I do have a financial advisor, but the problem is they're only focusing on one piece of the puzzle. And that's exactly correct. And the problem is when you're focused on one piece of the puzzle, you're not taking into account all these other little moving parts going around, so there's some slight bias. Uh, and like you said, we do the insurance, life insurance, long-term care insurance, we do small business insurance, and that's key person insurance. If you were to pass away, how does the company pay people out? Uh, we do a lot of tax planning for small businesses, and, and, and we just do the whole picture. So we're not biased in any way. And one big thing to point out regarding us investment-wise, we don't offer any of our own funds. So unlike people like Fidelity, they're offering their own funds, they're pushing their own products, Whereas we're pushing everyone's products and we're simply looking at analyzing all these different funds, what's going in the market, and really showing you and providing you with what's best for you. So we don't have that bias when it comes to investing. We don't have that bias when it comes to insurance. We don't have that bias when it comes to tax planning. Uh, you know, the more we can set you up, the more we can help you out, the better off our business will be. And we don't have any of those biases. And, and it really, in the simple terms, we are fiduciaries and we are doing what is best for our clients every single day. Because at the end of the day, you are the people reaching out, referring us to new people, and we want to do right by everyone we meet. And at the very least, if we don't proceed to do anything together, at least we educated you on certain topics that will help you out and benefit you when you're entering retirement. What about the markets right now? I mean, uh, what do you guys see? Are, are you guys, like like here at Patriot, uh, we see higher rates uh, continuing, uh, not ending for a significant period of time, uh, which, which, again, we're seeing, you know, the Japanese yen, almost 150 yen, uh, the, the U.K., their problem, uh, Swiss needing uh, billions of dollars uh, that the Fed is now supplanting. We just see a lot of things, a lot of traps out there uh, that could make these markets pretty ugly over the next, say, say 90 to 180 days. Yeah, and we're seeing similar things. Uh, by no means are we telling everyone, hey, the market's going to go up tomorrow uh, because we just don't know. And it could be continuing, like you said, the next 90, 180 days where the market just goes up and down, up and down, up and down. And really what we're telling all of our clients is we develop this philosophy together. We're going to stick to it. A lot of my clients have relocated, uh, rebalanced their 401Ks, their investments through us prior to this market crash, and we're really set up in a good spot and situation. And it, what I just tell people is, yes, we need to stay in the market, but we also shouldn't be going all out risky right now because I still think there's some bottoming out left to do over these next couple of months, and as things start to look better, we get through the midterms um, and all this political chaos cools down, we believe the market's going to continue to rise back up but it's not going to be like COVID. It's going to be a slow, gradual rise, but it's just making sure we're checking in at least every six months, revisiting our plans, seeing if things have changed, and then reallocating due to that. But the biggest thing we're doing right now with clients is setting them up in buckets of money that aren't tied to the market so that when things like this happen, we are okay that we're not taking these hits. Yeah, and that's the thing. What about people? A lot of people out there saying, well, I missed it. I should have called Joey uh, earlier this year, but I didn't. Uh, did they miss it? Because I, I, I see more pain coming. I don't, I don't think they've missed it yet. You know, I, there might be some more pain. And, and if I knew for a fact, I, we, I wouldn't be here. I'd be on a beach somewhere on vacation. And we just don't know for a fact. So I can never guarantee people that things. Because if I am guaranteeing things, I'm probably being a liar. Um, and it's just knowing that, hey, there's probably some pain still left to be inflicted on us. 
but it's making sure we're taking as less and less pain as we possibly can, and we're setting ourselves up due to our time horizon and risk level. Joey, one last time here, because I know you got a, an appointment to get to. Uh, give everybody your contact information before we let you go. We will all text to my personal cell phone. Uh, that's 602-909-9048. Again, that's 602-909-9048. If I miss your call by chance, it's probably due to me being in a meeting, and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm available. Or you can just shoot me a text to check in. Uh, we'll chat on the phone for five to ten minutes, talk about where you're at, and then we'll set something up and uh, see if we can at least educate you on some things or be a resource for you in any way. And if you ever weren't able to write down that information, you can always go to the KHNC website under the sponsors page. Uh, you'll find my business card there. Joey, always good having you. I, I know uh, that we'll talk to uh, you again next Monday. Uh, have a good day out there, brother. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me on, and uh, enjoy the rest of the week. There you have it. So there's uh, there's my kid, uh, Northwestern Mutual, and uh, there's a reason why they're the best. You know, and Jason, I love what he says. Hey, they don't peddle their own products. What they do is is they offer you all the products, and, and you get the best of the best that way. I think that's why uh, they're continually ranked. I mean, year in and year out, they're ranked as the best out there. Yeah, if, if, when it comes to these products and, and you want to try to get yourself some help uh, moving in or out or sideways into this stuff, uh, Joey's going to be the guy to call if you're listening to this radio station, listening to the Patriot Radio News Hour, Joe. And he was talking about you can't you don't have a crystal ball. You can't, you know, nobody, none of us can really tell you for sure what's going to happen. But I'll tell you this, Joe, there's going to be a lot more pain. I, I don't see how there can't be. And I think as time goes on, Joe, if we're sitting here a couple of years from now, even five years from now, and we're doing this show, I think the uh, the market crash in 2020, which is, is kind of just swept under the rug, people don't want you to look at that. It's like, hey, look what's going on in 2022. What's going to happen in 2023? Look at these. Look at the inflation. They don't look at 2020. I, I, I wish I was a couple of years or five years from now, Joe, because they printed 40% of the money supply in 2020. And I think the Fed is was trapped in a place where they don't have their digital currency, right, Joe? And, and they can't they can't uh, drop rates down to zero. They have to raise rates because the inflation's here. They wanted inflation. The Fed wants inflation. And I think in the 08 crash, they shot a little low. They printed a bunch of money, Joe, 29 trillion. And what did it get them? Like one and one and three quarters uh, percent inflation. And they want two percent. Probably be happy if they had three. So they didn't get the inflation, you know, the, the Obama years, you know, the, the recovery. You know that recovery that wasn't really a recovery. It was just kind of a sideways grind. Well, they needed a huge, huge emergency because otherwise, how, how, do you, how do you even uh, legitimize printing 40% of the entire money supply in this country and who knows how much money went all over the world? Well, you have to have a, a worldwide pandemic where everyone's worried about vaccines and, and masks. And uh, then you get that inflation, Joe. And they shot too well, high. This know, they shot too high this time. Uh, and I, I, I you're, you're right about 2020. I, th I go even further back, not that much further back. But remember the when the Fed, when this was Janet Yellen, uh, who started the quantitative tightening the first time. Yep. Uh, and, and, and remember, we had what they called the temper, the taper tantrum, uh, where uh, the, all of a sudden the Fed seemingly out of nowhere had to reverse course on on its 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 tapering. That was uh, remember Trump was president. Uh, that was kind of the the approaching the. The, the fall of 2019, people forget that. And remember, the market reacted very, very, very poorly. I mean, the Dow, uh, for, for a, a brief few days, got below 20,000, and, and people forget. And then the Fed, of course, came back and, and pumped everything back up. And then, of course, very conveniently, Jason, COVID came right after that. They stopped quantitative mm -hmm. tightening. They started blowing. Here comes COVID, and, and they blow up the money supply. I think that taper, uh, that tantrum uh, with the taper, should have been the first real good indication 
that, you know what, we're in trouble here. Uh, that box we keep talking about, uh, all this money they printed, uh, they're really not effectively able, Jason, to soak this money up. And, and now, of course, we've got the inflation, and the problem is uh, already uh, the inflation hasn't, hasn't abated at all, and already all these cracks are emerging. Even the Treasury this weekend, nobody's going to talk about it. But there was big discussions this weekend inside our treasury of, hey, are we going to have to buy these treasuries even here mm -hmm. to prevent what happened in the U.K.? Of course they have to buy them all up, Joe. It's their funny money that, that they've spread throughout the world. So they're going to have to buy all this stuff. Up. That's what they're setting up to do. I think they get the, uh, the, F uh, the Fed interest rate up to, I don't know, 5 or even 6, 7 next year. And that'll give them room. I don't think they drop it back down to zero, Joe. I think that gives enough room with the inflation trying to wash this situation. We could have 10 years where Dow will not get back to 36. And uh, But, yeah, if they only have to go down to 2%, Joe, Fed funds rate, and they start printing money again, buy up all those assets, then, then uh, they've bought themselves more runway, haven't they? 800-951-0592, and, and I don't know how many days in a row of this up and down, up and down. Uh, you know, the, the, we, we ended last week, uh, we had uh, the Dow down 500, then it was up 800, then it was down 400. Today, uh, the Dow is up 500, gold's up 20, uh, silver's up almost 70 cents. Uh, gold's, what, 1862 right now, silver uh, 1875. Uh, Jason, everything is flying off the shelves. Uh, we had those rounds on sale Friday, uh, and we had it set up Friday because this was a great opportunity. Uh, we were super excited about having silver uh, that close, you know, to spot uh, that that we haven't seen in so long. Uh, we were rerunning the show that we had in the morning. You have a show in the afternoon. We said, hey, let's run that show again. Uh, and you you actually had to go in and, and modify it because we couldn't offer it. Yeah, I got done running some errands Friday afternoon, and uh, I heard the sell that we sold out. So I was like, well, I'll uh, I'll go change that show out. <laughs> so uh, all we had for sale was the uh, we had twenty our liberties, which were still twenty sixty uh, in that afternoon show. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's crazy, Joe. The, we we talked before the show, and you've been talking regularly about the. Uh, the premiums are so high. You know, we were looking at that stuff before, and I got a question. Let's just let's just for for a uh, a new person or somebody looking at the website because uh, right now we uh, last last I knew we don't have a special today. But if someone goes to uh, the they click on shop at allamericancold.com, Joe, and they see the prices on the items on the page. I know, like the ten thousand gold eagles, we don't have so there's no price. We don't have those, but. Are all the, the stuff we have at the site, is that the price to buy those items? Do we have that stuff available? Yeah, so right now what we're doing is uh, you'll notice, like Jason said, 10-ounce gold eagles, uh, American gold eagles. They're completely uh, out of stock. So you'll see the product there, but you won't see a price. Uh, that's going to tell you we just can't get it. Uh, as, as, as we talk about... Uh, silver premiums, as an example, we can still get junk. I can still get silver eagles. That's yeah. just going to be significantly higher pricing, uh, especially for somebody that maybe, hey, I've been used to, I've been buying gold and silver for for twenty years, but they kind of go in and out, right? They, they hey, maybe I haven't, I haven't looked at purchasing anything uh, for the last two or three years, and then you go to the website and you see the the price, and you're looking at, you know, spot. Eight 1875, and yet you're talking about buying silver eagles for you know 37, 38, 39 dollars. Uh, and, and for a lot of people, they're like, "What? What the heck's going on?" And I think this is another reason uh, why I'm really nervous uh, right now about what we're seeing play out here because. Uh, even though, you know, and obviously the Dow's down. Let, let's not kid ourselves, right? The Dow uh, ha, a, 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 and the S&P, the NASDAQ, have had a tough year. Uh, Jason and I, we're just talking with Joey, right? Hey, we think there's probably, not probably, there, there's more pain uh, for these markets uh, coming. But the realities are, Jason, it's, it's not 
terrible, uh, but you would expect that gold and silver would be doing a lot better uh, than what we're seeing out there. But the realities are, you know what, it really is the amount of buying. It, it's been unrelenting uh, all across the board. I don't care if it's gold. I don't care if it's silver. I don't care if it's bullion or, or in bars or if it's the pre-33s, uh, silver eagles to, to rounds to junk silver. Jason, uh, everybody is buying here. And again, the physical markets are telling you, hey, we don't care about what the paper markets say. Uh, gold and silver are heading higher and significantly higher. So, uh, yeah, Joe, I'm looking at the website. I'm going back to the website. Uh, are we able to sell Silver Eagle? Do, can we get them? And can, or can we sell them at that price that's on the website? Seven seventy or old? Is that is that where we're at? I, I, I want to make sure. where we are at. Yep, that is where we if are. If somebody at. wanted to order a case, because I see the case, they can, they can, they can get. I know it might take a couple of weeks for delivery. I get that, but they can get it that price. They can get it, and again, Jason's right. Delivery times have stretched out. Let me give you an idea. So these rounds, I, I, I called everybody in their mother about these rounds. I've got another delivery date. Here's what the, they told me: they won't get more silver in until the end of November. Uh, so the, the realities are right now, uh, the end of November, why do I have the feeling that you're not going to be able to buy any Silver Eagles? Yes. Because that's when the mint gets ready to change over uh, to uh, the, the next year, the 2023 Silver Eagles. Well, so I was checking prices on Silver Eagles, and I, I've been pushing Joe because I keep thinking that the Silver Eagle price on our website is a little low. <laughs> But uh, a lot of the, uh, the the big distributors, you know, the big companies, uh, they don't even have supplies. A lot of them, and the ones that do, Joe, I looked at, it, they're at seventeen uh, seven hundred seventy six roll. That's before shipping. So t technically, if you want a special, Joe, if we can sell them for seven seventy, that's the cheapest in the country. That's the cheapest. Yeah, and at, the, at our website, we are cheaper without a special to buy Silver Eagles today, Joe. And, and we have been, uh, we've really tried, uh, and Jason will tell you this, to keep our, our, our premiums, especially on, uh, on silver, as competitive as possible. You know, one of the advantages, we've been in this, uh, th this is Patriots, what, 25, almost 26 years now in, in, the, in the industry. Uh, we have contacts everywhere. Uh, we, we, we are one of those dealers where uh, all the major wholesalers know who we are, uh, and, and we're out there trying every day. You know, the first thing uh, when, when Connie or Arlene or Brittany get here, the first thing they do, Jason, we're, we're, they spend the first 45 minutes to an hour of their day calling wholesalers, what do you have for us today? They, they know our girls by name. All they do, hey, it's Connie. Hey, it's Brittany. It's Arlene. They already know up Patriots on the phone, and and uh, that's why we're able to do what we're going to do. Uh, on, on, I, I'm going to say this: Silver Eagles. We're one of the cheapest in the country right now at seven hundred and seventy dollars a roll. Uh, Twenty dollar gold pieces. They're two thousand ninety five. I'm going to tell you what, and, and I didn't even, you know, Jason's been pressing me, and I said, hey, there's nothing out there. There's nothing out there. One day only. Today only, 2050, I didn't get any deal from any wholesaler. Uh, this is just us taking less margin to try to get you uh, to be able to put some gold and silver away uh, at a reasonable price. So we got $20 gold, 2050. I'll get it changed on the website. And, and then, of course, uh, U.S. Silver Eagles, $770 a roll. And like Jason said, here's the problem. You're going to see this more and more as, as the winter rolls on. Lack of availability is going to be the number one problem. 800-951-0592. Jason and I, we're coming right back. 800-951-0592. Patriot Radio News Hour. Uh, U.S. $20 Liberties. These are the older ones, 1866 to 1907. Uh, why do we like them? It's the most private way to own gold. You can buy it, sell it, trade it. 
Uh, you don't have to worry about 1099s and giving out your Social Security number. Uh, and then, of course, Jason, uh, as we know, if there is another gold confiscation, the only gold people were allowed to keep the last time was pre-19, well, I'm sorry, was collectible gold, right? All your pre-1933 gold, uh, your liberties, your saints, you had to turn all that in, but you the only gold Americans were allowed to own for almost 40 years was collectible gold coins, Jason, and we know that the United States government, most of that pre-33 gold, a lot of people, a lot of history in that coin, most people don't realize uh, that when they when gold got confiscated from the citizenry, all that gold got turned in and, and melted down. Uh, allegedly, that is the gold that is in Fort Knox. If you want to uh, believe uh, the Treasury and, and the Mint, well, not really the Treasury, the Mint, uh, the Mint will tell you that, that uh, they, they've seen this gold. It's the pre-1933 gold that's in Fort Knox. Jason, it's not even in... Uh, delivery standard. In other words, uh, they put some copper in these these pre-33 coins to give it hardness. Most people will tell you, any woman will tell you, do not buy 24 karat jewelry because it'll get ruined. It That's how soft gold is. Uh, but, but it's not even in delivery bar form. Uh, delivery bar form, it's got to be at least 995 pure. Uh, the, uh, the mid director, uh, Moy, was the last one that said he was in there. I want to say it was 2012. And, and he said... You can even still on some of the bars see see part of the coin design still on it, uh, but the U.S. Mint, uh, when they started minted gold and silver again in 1986, the government reclassified any pre-33 that didn't get melted down. In other words, that was gold that was most likely in Europe, right? It was overseas because that was the money. Uh, all of those coins got deemed to be collectible. Yeah, the one the the ones the bank the banks turned in for the confiscation and the melted in those bars you're talking about. We don't even know if those bars exist anymore. Uh, I would say, Joe, since that's considered the the Americans, that's the American citizens' property. Well, it's an asset. It's on the books of the federal government. So at any time they, in the last ten years, they could have melted those down into and, and put them into gold eagles for for all we know, Joe. So he, we don't know if Fort Knox even has any gold, but uh, that shows you how much gold got turned in from the banks. That they were in such a rush to melt them, they didn't even do a good job of melting the, melting the coins down. They just uh, got them soft and mushed them into a shape and threw them into bars and put them in Fort Knox really fast because times were a changing. So, you know, it's, and the other the other way uh, Americans owned gold was uh, jewelry. Uh, Joe, they they put it in jewelry. You know, I, I remember. Uh, the early 1980s, you had Mr. T, you know, <laughs> with the big chains or you know the big huge amount of chains around the neck. But that was the only way you could own gold, jewelry and collectible coins, you know. And and, and what what's funny is is uh, smart guys figured out how to, to to put it away because lo and behold, you know, the twenty dollar gold piece became uh, thirty five dollars, you know, 1933, right, Joe? Thirty four. And then uh, the the price after 1971, the gold confiscation, the price started jumping, and then it just kept on going up, didn't it, Joe? In the 1970s, the dramatic rise. Can you imagine if gold prices were going up like they did in the mid 70s? And, and and yeah, I mean that's just something where uh, you know from 42 dollars uh, all the way all the way up to to 800 dollars, uh, kind of lets you know uh, the amount of 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 angst out there globally that was was going on and, and Jason it, it, it's here again we just don't know uh, today in the UK uh, the central bank has reaffirmed uh, for now that they are not going to intervene back into the the Treasury markets uh, as they've been doing uh, but one thing to point out of uh, the new the new uh, Treasury Secretary of the UK uh, has officially rolled back now. They were they were, they were having tax cuts and tax breaks and this and that. Uh, essentially, this morning they came out and said, "Hey, no no bailouts, if you will, uh, for the citizenry of the UK." Uh, and, and again, it, I think that just kind of tells you all that you really need to know of why this is different this time. 
uh, in the past, it was always easy uh, for the government, the first sign of trouble, hey, let's start giving handouts out, right? Let's give tax cuts. Let's send everybody a check. Let's do all of these things. And, and Jason, it, at least uh, it appears for all the other developed nations, we'll find out here if we're going to be able to pull that trick off because Catherine Austin Fitz is out with another warning. I hope everyone's getting ready. Bank of America's been talking about it. J.P. Morgan's been talking about it. Now Austin Fitz is out. 2023, things could get very, very ugly. And, Jason, everybody's so used to when that happens, hey, just send me a check. And as the U.K. has proven, guess what? They can't do it this time. That's right, Joey. It, that's exactly right. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I find it that we should be comparing to the 70s more and more often. And inflation was through the most of that decade. It wasn't just the late 70s into the early 80s. It was pretty much the whole decade. There was inflation spiking, coming back down, spiking. And Joe was right. You know, gold was about $40 an ounce at the beginning of 1971. And by 1975, it was 160 That's a fourfold flip. And then by from 75 to 1980... It did another four-fold flip. You know what that means, Joe? We're kind of in the same frame. We're in, t- we're in 2022, kind of like 1972. Can you imagine four years? Gold's $8,000, four-fold flip. Why do I get the feeling that very likely could happen, depending on how much control the Fed loses over this thing? It would certainly understand all the heavy buying in the physical markets while the paper markets are resisting. We'll be right back. Final segment coming up. I'm going to jump off here for a quick second. I'll I'll be right back with you, but just want to remind everyone, listen, uh, go to our website right now. Uh, We've got Catherine Austin Fitz. Uh, She she was on USA Watchdog again. And, Jason, uh, if you want to know what's coming, uh, that's a great source. Yeah, she's been really, really good at at, at, uh, watching what's getting ready to happen. She has has very much a a conspiratorial understanding of what's going on in the market. So she's done – Excellent, excellent work when it comes to, to knowing what's going to happen, why you should be in gold and silver. And uh, I'm going to go back uh, to what we I had mentioned a little bit on the last segment as we're getting ready to finish this show off. Gold from 1971, 40 bucks ish, and uh, that was the average. The average price in 1971 was $40.80. By 1975, the average price that year was $160.87, four fourfold flip. From 1975 to 1980, another five years, $160.87, the average price in 1975. The average price in 1980 was $614, essentially another fourfold flip. That would be the same thing as, as we're, you know, everyone knows there's Agenda 2030. Everyone knows there's plans for this new uh, global monetary reset. That would be the same thing as, well, gold goes right now from 2000 to uh, 8000 and then by the end of 2030, fourfold flip that, 32000 I'm not saying gold is going to be 32000 at the end of the decade. What I'm saying is with this inflation, the inflation that the Fed desperately wants so that they can fight it and they can reset asset prices, it's not out of the question. It's not out of the question. You know, I, I've watched rhodium just in the years that I've been here. I watched rhodium go from when Joe was on the air selling it for $800 when it dropped suddenly. What, what a great price that was, right? Yeah. Yeah, Joe, that was one of the it's best crazy. things. I, I got to like thirty or 40000 Yeah, yeah, and it's still sitting around, I don't know, $15,000 an ounce. That's going to happen to gold and silver. I, I, it's not because gold and silver is going to be so valuable and it's going to make you rich to own it. It's just that's the way it's, the prices of everything is going to go. This inflation, Joe, I think this is a decade-long problem we're going to have. Yeah, and on Austin Fitz, it, it, you know, talking about looking at all the money being printed and pumped out, uh, climate change, green energy, the environment, all these different sorts of new scams uh, as ways to try to inject money and talking about a, a lot of pain coming. Uh, they are going to keep raising rates. This is something Jason and I have been trying to get through everyone's head. Uh, if you're the Federal Reserve, you're playing a game, a global game, 
And what you need and have to do is protect at all costs the reserve currency status. And, Jason, this is kind of playing out here, right? If they don't protect the reserve currency status, uh, and the problem is now it's not emerging markets they're going to kill. It's going to be the developed markets. I agree with that. And I think the end goal, uh, besides a digital currency, is going to have uh, 3 4 5% annual inflation. And that's going to be normal, and that's going to be good because you have this elongated, horrible inflation, Joe, uh, on their numbers being 8%, let's just say, or 9%. Uh, 4% by next year is going to seem like a dream. And everyone's going to, they're going to call the Fed a hero if they can get it down there. Oh, yeah, we'll just do 4% a year. Yeah, now, now, we can, now we can lower some interest rates down a little bit, and we can print some money, save some markets. I mean, that's where we're headed, Joe. I, I, that's, people, yeah, lower it's, standard it's, of living, Joe. And, and she just calls it out the direct reset, fundamentally re engineering of the government systems on planet Earth. I hope you're ready. You better have some gold and silver put away. 800 951 0592. This is a super sale on $20 gold at 2050. Take advantage of it. 